guys, Rumor15 here, and today I'll be counting down my top 10 Doctor Who stories, part 2. New Who! Honourable mention is the 11th hour. Let's move on to number 10, which is. School Reunion. Sarah Jane's in this episode, and she's really good in it. It's nice to see her back. K9's also in it as well. Again, great to see him in it. Also, I think it's this. It's because of this that she gets a spin-off show, Sarah Jane Adventures. And the companions are good in it as well. Rose is good as well. I, I like the rivalry between Sarah Jane and Rose. It's quite good. Mickey isn't annoying in this, surprisingly. Uh, the side characters are okay, so that's like the kids in it. They're bearable. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't really like the aliens. The plot is good, though. It's good, but the friends aren't that interesting. And it can be a bit dull in the middle, and before pretty much Sarah Jane so shows up, it's very boring. Number nine is Time of the Angels. It's a great two-parter. Cliffhanger for part one is good, and part two is really good as well. In And we learn more about River's story. Well... We don't. We sort of get introduced to her, and she's really good in this as well. She's a mystery, so that's more interesting. The Weeping Angels are great in it. In my opinion, I think it's the best version of the Weeping Angels. I didn't put Blink because I'm not so keen on Blink. It's a great episode, I'll admit, but it's not one of my favourites. But I think the Weeping Angels are really good in this one. Or, I don't know, it could have just been a single episode, to be honest. Moving on to number eight is The Lodger. Now, I'm sure lots of people are definitely going to disagree with me here, but sure might not be the best episode ever, that I can agree on, but it's one of my favourites. It's funny, very funny. The Doctor playing football, which is really good. No, see, he's really good at it. Um, he's not using the TARDIS, he's using his... He uses his brain more. One well, being my bad at that, he's not relying on the TARDIS or his Sonic. And he is very creative in this episode as well. Although the villain is a bit terrible, it's going to be number seven, Under the Lake. Now, you may think this is a very random one. Is this a two-parter? Yeah, it is. Hold on. It's Under the Lake and Before the Flood. That's it. Yeah, anyway... Great villains, they're very scary, and I like that. It's sort of a combination of ghost zombies. I like that, it's pretty good, and I like the setting underwater. And also the cliffhanger to part one is really good. Uh, good side characters as well. All, all the other side characters, all the other characters were actually really good. Uh, moving on, number six is... Wild well, enough in time. Uh, also, say in the comments which your your which is your favourite Doctor Who story of classic era, new Who, of just all time, or just put a list in the comments. I will read the comments as well. So yeah, it's a great cliffhanger part one. It's also really good to see the Master before Messi. What was his name? Oh, I'm just gonna call him Saxon, something like that. Anyway, he he's gr he's good in it. It's nice to see how he actually turns into Missy at the end of the second part. I think Missy kills him or something like that. Well, they kill each other and then they both regenerate. I think Missy is seemingly dead, quote unquote, because she could easily return. It's the Master. Are you kidding? Oh yeah, she's in season eleven. Oh yeah, that's obvious. I'm kidding. She's not in season eleven, but the Master. He slash she, she's, they're not going to be there for very long. They're clearly going to bring them back, him back, her back. Oh, okay, let's just move on to that. So, yeah, the Master and Missy are really good in it. It's, and also the cliffhanger that the Master is the guy who helped Bill out. That's, there's like three cliffhangers at the, at the end of the first part, which is really interesting. You've got... Master, the master before Missy, reeling himself, then you've also got Bill turning into a Cyberman, and then, I don't know, 
the Cybermen starting to invade, invade. It's really good. And number five is a good man goes to war. Now I'm sure a few people will be like, what? Why? What? Because people might not have watched this or just disagree with me. But for a long time it has been one of my favourites. And yeah, it's got great characters, great side characters. I've completely forgotten what that blue guy's name is. I've completely forgot. Uh, Madame Vastra and Strax and Jenny are really good in it. Strax is hilarious as ever, obviously. I really can't remember what that blue guy blue guy's name is. Dorian. No, that's not it. Just tell me in the comments. Uh, the Doctor is really good at this. We get to see his darker side and more emotional side. And the awkwardness and funny. It's awkward and funny, but it's good awkwardness. Good story as well. We get the origin of River, sort of. And we learn that River is Amy's and Rory's daughter. That's a great cliffhanger. Again, I sort of just went over this, but more of River's origin. As I said, good cliffhanger and Strax is a good nip. The day of the Doctor, the 50th anniversary. Ten okay, I'm just going to list things. Number one, David meets Matt. David Tennant and Matt meets Matt Smith and John Hurt. M the meeting of the Doctors is really good. Well, good villains, the Zygons and Daleks, sort of about, but mainly Zygons. That's a great choice. Uh, and great ca side characters as well. Um, the whole of the unit is great. Uh, that's good. And good stories. Well, it's not a great story. It's a good story. Although, it kind of just felt more of a War Doctor movie. It was basically about the Time War. Which, it was a good... It was interesting. But anyway, moving on. Seeing all the doctors at the end where Matt Smith saying his speech and then you see all the doctors lined up and you see they're looking at Gallifrey. That was amazing. So when they're trying to save Gareth, Gallifrey and you see all the doctors popping up and saying stuff. That's great. Um, and finally, Tom Baker. Tom Baker was amazing. He was a huge surprise at the end and I... I and that was amazing, that was really great to see the story. However, the two bad things, yes, I do have the two bad things. And the reasons it's not in my top three is because one, it was a bit disappointing for me. My high expectations were very high though, in fairness. Um, it, I thought it was going to have all the Doctors and yeah, which was, and I thought it was going to have all the villains very high expectations <laughs> it was still good though but in my opinion i think it should have been more like the fan movie the code of the legend in action it was a fan movie of action figures it's called code of the legend that was really good i watched it uh it was it was great and i think that should have been what the day of the doctor was it was 50 years it should have had everything all the villains all the doctors all the companions and the code of the legend was good because you had we i uh, yeah anyway just check it out it's really good trust me say in the comments if you watch it as well if you just type in doctor who action figures the code of the legend it should come up also, there was a few Lego trailers as well for the 50th anniversary fan made. That also looked good as well, and it's kind of what the day of the Doctor should have been. It's the name of the Doctor. We just had day of the Doctor. Now we got the name of the Doctor. It's got good characters: like Jenny, Strax, Rastra, Rivers even in it as well. And the Doctor's good in it. See the emotional and darker side of the Doctor, just like the good man goes to war. Uh, also good is the story. We don't actually learn what the Doctor's name is, which is very disappointing. But it's good, still really, really good. The story's great. Um, it actually, in my opinion, I kind of felt it was more of a 50th anniversary than the 50th anniversary. I think if they also had... David Tennant and maybe John Hurt in it. I think the story for the name of the Doctor 
was much better. The, it was the name of the Doctor or Day of the Doctor, that was, again, that was hard to pick. But the reason the name of the Doctor was is better and more my favourite is because the story is so much better. The villains are more interesting and it, if anything, it had more of seeing all the Doctors. The Impossible Astronaut. Great two-parter. We get more on River's backstory as well. And the characters are good in it. Amy, Rory, River, Delaware the Third. Uh, they're all good. Um, that's really... The Doctor sort of dying as well. That was great. Anyway, also the beginning of part two is really good as well. The overall story is great. Uh, as I said, the Doctor sort of dying is good as well. The only bad thing, although it can be a bit boring, particularly in the second part when they go to the orphanage, the whole orphanage part of it was very boring. But the rest of it was great, the silence was great in it, but it still doesn't beat my number one. I would guess by now it is... The Pandoric Opens and the Big Bang. But here we go, obviously you can see River, she's great in it, the Doctor's gonna there you go, River, Rory, the Doctor, all of his old anim enemies as well. Great two-parter and season finale as well. But yeah, season five was a great season and the season finale was great as well. We didn't really get the answer of how the cracks happened. We didn't really, we, we know they, at the end, they're all stopped, they're all shut. We don't actually know what caused it. That's what's interesting. They still haven't solved that. We don't actually know what caused it. But I'm probably wrong. Say in the comments what caused it. I know the doctor sh had to go to the other side to make the cracks close, but I don't understand what caused it. I really don't. Uh, I, think it, I think it was the TARDIS exploding. Something like that. I don't know. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Uh, Alonzi Geronimo! I don't know why I said that. Anyway. See ya.